to modern magic of storytelling. A peek into the world of legends, stars and the art of filmmaking. The home to heritage of Indian cinema. Visit the National Museum of Indian Cinema. Mumbai welcomes you to take a walk through 100 years of Indian cinema at the National Museum of Indian Cinema from the pioneers of silent films and those in technicolors to modern magic of storytelling a peek into the world of legends stars and the art of filmmaking the home to heritage of Indian cinema visit the National Museum of Indian Cinema The word woman is something which we have been hearing since right from the childhood, isn't it? So women, whenever we see, it's like a source of inspiration, right from our mother, then from our teachers, family, colleagues, students, everywhere around. Distinguished guests, gentlemen, and the lovely ladies out there. A very good afternoon to one and all. This is Jaita Ghosh, the manager of National Museum of Indian Cinema under the umbrella of National Film Development Corporation Limited. Can I have a round of applause for all the lovely ladies out there? <laughs> NMTC serves as a repository of cinematic history, showcasing the milestones, legends, and innovations that have shaped India's vibrant film industry. Can we please have a video on NMIC as well as NFDC? My name is Gandhi, Mohandas K. Gandhi. I have been given a word before I have been given a word before I have been given a word. Ha 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 ha. We will play a song. We will show you such a song that you will be dead. Mirza Nam, Chin 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 Baba Chin 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 बेमिसाल फिल्में जिन्होंने इंडियन सिनेमा को एक नई दिशा कोई ना कोई चीज है जो आगे बढ़कर हमें रोशनी की ओर जाने की प्रेरणा देती है एक नया अर्थ दिया नहीं बोलना अपनी सगी बहन के घर में मैं मेहमान हूँ मोसमा वापस उवमान पड़ता अवमान लिया मैं हूँ महेश दलाल देखा कैसे खोल रहा था मुझे 
मैं किसके साथ रहूंगा मेरे होते हुए तुम्हें और किसी की क्या जरूरत घर भी कभी अपना होता है जब तक उस बच्ची को हक नहीं मिलेगा तब तक तुम्हारे गांव में एक भी बच्ची नहीं बचेगी जिन्होंने फिल्मों को रुपये पर्दे से उतार कर जिंदगी से जोड़ा जीते हैं से, हम किसी से कम नहीं। देख ले अच्छे से मालकिन बन गई है तू <laughs> और कामयाबी की नई परिभाषा नया इतिहास रचा कभी कभी गलत ट्रेन भी सही जगह पहुंचा देती है हमें नहीं मिलता इंडिया का कोर्ट कमाना पड़ता है पंच हजार एक साड़ी साठी हिस पर मिला जब तक तोड़ेंगे नहीं तब तक छोड़ेंगे और हम सब की डेस्टिनीज एक दूसरे से कनेक्टेड है मान <laughs> दुनिया ने ऐसी फिल्मों को न सिर्फ सराहा बल्कि उन्हें सम्मानित भी किया National Film Development Corporation of India the film would not have been made <laughs> Mumbai welcomes you to take a walk through 100 years of indian cinema at the national museum of indian cinema from the pion telling a peek into the world of legends stars and the art of filmmaking the home to heritage of indian cinema visit the national museum of indian cinema Thank you. International Women's Day, a day which is celebrated since last hundred years. The first Women's Day was celebrated in the year 1911. It's a day when we acknowledge, we recognize the achievements of women. And this year, 2024, we have the theme of inspire inclusion to recognize the unique perspectives of women from all parts of life. isn't it strange that you know that we in women we all have so many things to role to play in our daily lives yet we celebrate this one day so nmic and fdc feels that you know we need to celebrate it every day and since today we are also coming up with a very beautiful panel discussion and this is a way to you know honor the lovely ladies out there so i won't talk much about it because i want the dignitaries to speak about it on i feel woman is a master of her own future and there is nothing which cannot which can stop her isn't it true do you agree that great okay so we in nfdc have taken a step to celebrate this with a panel discussion the topic women in cinema shaping global narratives so without saying i want to show you a video on what it is all about can i please have the video
Ladies and gentlemen, prepare to be dazzled as we welcome to the stage the master of cinematic brilliance, the virtuoso of storytelling, the one and only Jayprat Desai. With a lineage rooted in the illustrious hall of New York's film school elite, Jayprat sir emerged as a luminary wielding a master's degree in directing like a conductor commanding his orchestra. From the ethereal beauty of his Marathi masterpiece, Nagrik, to the upcoming Netflix sensation, Fir I Haseen Dilruba, Jayprat's creative genius knows no bounds. His artistic prowess extends beyond the silver screen, weaving tales of intrigue and emotion in his award-winning Hindi web series, Mukbir and Khan Praveen Tambi. From accolades at the Screenwriters Association Awards to the grandeur of the Film Fair OTT Awards, Jayprat's name is synonymous with excellence. So let us elevate our spirits and embrace the magic about to unfold as we welcome the luminary, the visionary, Jayprat Desai. Sir, can I please have you on stage and can I have a big round of applause for him, please? Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's an honor to have you here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now with a great honor and admiration, we want to welcome Mr. D. Ramakrishnan, our esteemed general manager of NFDC on the dais, and to tell a few words about him throughout his tenure, Ramakrishnan sir has exemplified visionary leadership, guiding NFDC to new heights of excellence in the world of Indian cinema. Under his guidance, we have not only learned invaluable lessons, but also witnessed remarkable growth and innovation in our industry. Sir, so unwavering commitment to fostering creativity and nurturing talent has been instrumental in shaping NFDC's journey towards success. Thank you so much, sir. We would request now, sir, to kindly give a small token of love from us to Jayprat, sir. Can I have a round of applause for it, please? Now I request uh, Rama sir to kindly come here and speak a few lines and also introduce our speakers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the National Film Development Corporation, I extend a warm welcome to each and every one of you to this esteemed panel discussion titled Women in Cinema Shaping Global Narratives. It is an honor to convene such a distinguished gathering at the prestigious National Museum of Indian Cinema, NMIC, which stands as a symbol of India's rich cinematic heritage and cultural legacy. I would also like to extend a special welcome to Mr. Jean Mock, Consul General of uh, France, and Mr. Vijay. meticulously traces the evolution of Indian cinema, highlighting its milestones, innovations, and cultural significance. NMIC is more than just a museum. It is a celebration of India's cinematic journey, a homage for its creative uh, visionaries, and a source of inspiration for generations to come. As an organization committed to the nurturing and promoting of Indian cinema on both national and international platforms, NFDC recognizes the invaluable contributions of women filmmakers, artists, and professionals in shaping the diverse tapestry of cinematic storytelling. It is imperative to recognize and celebrate the invaluable contribution of women across all facets of society. Women play multifaceted roles as leaders, creators, innovators, caregivers, and change makers shaping the world with their resilience, compassion, and unwavering determination. Today, we have the privilege of hosting a panel of exceptionally talented individuals who exemplify the spirit of creativity, innovation, and resilience. I would like to welcome Mahanas Mohammadi, the Iranian filmmaker and women's rights activist, who fearlessly 
amplifies the voices of women in her films. Can you have the video on the screen? Yeah, uh, sorry for the technical glitch, and uh, we are online now. Um, I would like to welcome Manas Mohammadi, the Iranian filmmaker and women's rights activist, who fearlessly amplifies the voices of women in her films. Welcome, Mohammadi. Can you hi. Yeah, unmute your mic and say yes. hi? Yeah, hi, hi. Yes, hi. 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 hi, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate for inviting me. Yeah. We also welcome Boyna Andrik, the Serbian cinematographer, known for her visually captivating storytelling and her adaptness in capturing raw emotions on screen. Welcome, Andrik. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you. I'm honored also to be invited, and I'm really touched by being uh, 
among these uh, wonderful ladies worldwide that we never met, but we still um, are in the same uh, film business. So thank you. Thank you, Andrik. Uh, we also welcome Sanyukta Kaza, the Indian editor and National Film Award winner, recognized for her unparalleled skill in weaving together narratives that resonate deeply with audiences. Welcome, Sanyukta. Can you unmute and say a few words? Hi. Thank you for the invite. I'm uh, truly honored to be around these wonderful women today. Thank you. We also welcome Rana Aid, the Lebanese sound designer, renowned for her innovative approach to soundscapes that captivates audiences worldwide. Welcome, Aid. Hello, thank you so much for the invitation. Really, I'm very happy to be with you. Thank you. We also have uh, Madeleine Fontaine, the French cost um, costume designer, celebrated for her meticulous attention to detail and her ability to transport audiences to different eras through her stunning creations. Welcome, uh, Fontaine. Can you unmute and uh, say a few words? I did. I did. Hello? Hi. I, I unmuted, but... Thank you. So we have uh, a great panel of uh, uh, <laughs> professionals. Each panelist brings a wealth of experience and expertise to the table. Today we are going to have the discussions in a topic which is very relevant to today's period. Joining our esteemed panelists is uh, Jayaprad Desai, our distinguished moderator, with his wealth of knowledge and experience in the Indian So the table uh, and the floor is for you. you. Together, we will embark on a journey to explore the transformative power of uh, storytelling through film and the pivotal role that women play in shaping global narratives. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. And we look forward to have an enriching and enlightening discussion ahead. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So the floor is all about you. I just don't want to look back every time to look at all of you. <laughs> you can start with our gender laptop. Hi. Uh, welcome once again. Uh, as we celebrate Women's Day, uh, all of us know that uh, just last evening uh, the, was the Academy Awards uh, ceremony in Los Angeles. This morning, in fact, in, according to the Indian time. And uh, while giving away the award, uh, for the best director to Christopher Nolan, uh, Steven Spielberg said a very interesting thing. Uh, he said that uh, films uh, do more than simply entertain us. What they do is they open ourselves to each other. They open our lives to each other. They, they, they show us a light on the life that we have lived, the times that we have lived the times that we are in right now, and they point at where we are poised to go. So in a way, cinematic narratives are affecting the societal narratives in the world today. On the panel, we have five women who are affecting these cinematic narratives all over the world. Uh, we have already introduced them, and I will again talk about them as we uh, go through the conversation. But uh, this is a galaxy of five illustrious women who are known for their power, their talent, their resilience. Let me begin with uh, Ms. Mehnaz Mahmoodi. Uh, actually, uh, there's, a, there's a very interesting way I can introduce her. Uh, 
there was a letter that she had written, uh, which was read in the Cannes uh, Film Festival in 2011. And for this, I have to give you a little bit background of her, if I may, uh, Mehnaz. Uh, Mehnaz was because of a film that she made called Travelogue in, I think, 2010. Uh, in which uh, she interviewed the passengers on a train from Tehran, uh, you know, the people who were leaving the country. And because of the film, when, when, uh, when the film was screened in Paris, there was a huge furore, and she was not allowed to leave the country. She was banned from leaving Iran. In 2011, she starred in the film, uh, which was shown at the Cannes Film Festival in 2011. It was called uh, Momentary Marriage. And again, she was banned to leave the country, but she sent a letter to the Cannes Film Festival, which was read out by uh, well-known director Costa Gavris at the Cannes Film Festival. And I quote from that letter, she said, I'm a filmmaker and I'm a woman, two sufficient grounds to be guilty. Mehnaz, tell us about growing up as a woman and daring to be a filmmaker in that society. Thank you so much again. Uh, deeply, deeply, my feeling about growing up to such a society for me always, I felt I'm like in the prison prison of the society, prison of the tradition, pre pre in the prisoner of the so many, so many things around me. And uh, I learned uh, just stay, step by step how to ignore all those limitations. You know, uh, doesn't matter where, uh, where you're born, Iran, doesn't matter in the, which, uh, which part of the society you are existing. As a woman, definitely you are confrontation of the so many obstacles. And I remember the amazing uh, message from my father from in my childhood. Always he told me, don't listen to them. Just do whatever you want. I'm so appreciated by such a dad. Uh, tell me this message because when I was a kid, I heard that. And uh, maybe unconsciously, it lives in my mind always. And whenever I had uh, so many obstacles to do to work um i didn't i didn't think about that uh, uh, can i do it or not just i thought uh, how to find my way to to do that and uh, to living as a woman in the society which is everybody has their own idea everybody has their own influence about your life and you don't have you don't have a uh, any any rights for to make your own decision doesn't matter about your body how to wear the your dress doesn't matter how do you think uh, before even be born uh, just we are falling in the society which is before us before even be born they may they set up the how we can be a woman and the way they show us it was not the way i understand the way i understand it was to discover and explore what can I do in my life? What can I change? What can I do for myself? If I do for myself, definitely it affects the people, even the small group of the people around myself. It was so difficult. Now I'm through the, just you gave this small description about my past. Just I was thinking, yeah, I came this way, but that time, that moment, I was not thinking how could be, how can I put myself in the challenge? I was not thinking, just I was thinking, just I should do. I should just do right and uh, make my narrate. Uh, my uh, I narrate my story from my society and to tell how we are living, how we can change. And it was difficult, but I'm thinking uh, still there is so many things I have to do and continue this way. Right. The kind of subjects uh, that you have chosen, Mehnaz, be it uh, your first documentary, uh, Women Without Shadows, or uh, your fiction film, uh, Son, Mother, uh, yeah. it is, is it a natural utterance of what we have, you have been through and what we have been surrounded by? Does that dictate the choice of your subjects? 
Uh, the subjects I chose uh, at the beginning is uh, the women without shadow. I was the beginning of, uh, as a you know, young person in the society. I can, I got to understand there is no difference between me as a person living the family in the society and the person living in the shelter, which is the gathering the, all those women together. I got to understand there is no di big difference. Uh, there is a, just uh, there is a, like the. The, that shelter, it, it was like the prison, everything they control, even they don't have a choice to choose their own dress. And I'm as a person living in the society with the family, with the, and I was the same situation. Try to tell the, how I'm, how I'm thinking, I felt uh, so empathy with all those women in the shelter, which is uh, in the, in the place, actually, it's not a shelter, it's a place, just the, the, some women, they are gathering all of them together without having any rights, even the, always I keep telling, even the dress, even the dress rights, dress code, how, how do you want to wear the dress? They don't have even this right. And I think I start with them because I find myself within them. I was free out of that shelter, but uh, how the society out of this and inside this shelter, for me, it was the same. Actually, I find myself in that place uh, because I thought it doesn't matter where you are living. Still, if the, everything's controlling your th the way of your thinking, the way you're, uh, you're acting, it was the same. And any, doesn't matter, documentary or fiction, even, even fiction I'm making, uh, all those, my fiction is coming even from, uh, through the documentary based on the documented story. And... Uh, Anytime, anytime I'm trying to tell the story, I'm trying to find my challenge, to find myself, I'm, how I'm getting to find a way to go out of this challenge. Any story I made until now, it was the story which is I was living in, in, the, in, in the moment with, right. with all those. Yeah. Uh, great, it's, uh, and we'll come back to this, but let me open this conversation up to uh, Boyana from Serbia, of course. Please. Uh, and while I introduce uh, uh, Boyana, let me give you a small uh, nugget of some statistics. Let me throw some of them on your face over here. Uh, uh, according to uh, the Celluloid report uh, this year, uh, the maximum numbers of film professionals uh, out of the 100 top grossing films last year, 28% were, women were producers, 18% uh, editors were women, 17% writers were women, 9% composers were women, and cinematographers was only 8%. So cinematographers or DOP is probably, Bayana, one of the roles which conventionally or uh, because of uh, uh, the, 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 the victims that we have been of uh, the prejudices that are prevalent in the society has been a profession which women are least attracted to. How was it growing up in Serbia, in that part of Europe, and what is the usual tendency there? Yes, hello. Well, uh, even this 8% is a very, how to say, optimistic percentage because uh, actually it is from 2 to 4 to 7 to 8% depending on the cultural uh, differences in uh, different parts of the world. In, in Serbia, we are around 7%, but in next Slovenia, there are zero women cinematographers in the whole country, in the whole Slovenia. So it is, uh, it is uh, very challenging, and yes, we are the least um, uh, the least uh, women represented uh, in, in in this cinematography business and growing up in serbia yes um, uh, i also grew up in a very difficult times uh, it was um, uh, it was uh, when i was seven the war in yugoslavia happened so we were living in a very complicated situation uh, of yugoslavia breaking apart and we were very closed society at the point uh, but uh, what was the breaking point, point for me was actually my, my parents and my um, surrounding that was very 
not just inter intellectual base, but they uh, try to survive these challenging times with uh, practicing uh, a lot of music, films, culture, and uh, they, we, we joined all together uh, very often because we couldn't travel. Uh, it was uh, it was a time that uh, we couldn't exit uh, anymore uh, Serbia. So. Um, and my parents were very open. Uh, they, did, they didn't give me, they were not too ambitious, ambitious about me in a way that I have to work on a multiple stuff when I was a kid, but they just gave me the freedom to do whatever I want. And I think it actually developed my creativity uh, because uh, I was not told what to do and they didn't deal with me if I'm bored or not. They were just like, so enjoy read books, uh, watch films, uh, play with your uh, with your mates. And this is actually how I started. Um, I started uh, practicing photography and um, but I was also thinking that how all of this wouldn't be even noticed if I wasn't uh, recognized by other people who, who paid attention on, on us and uh, gave us some kind of a um, push to to go toward, uh, toward this. So then another war came in Serbia. We, we had this bombing in 1999, and uh, my school was not working for almost nine months. And uh, we were not doing anything, uh, sitting in my hometown. And there's been a photography, photography um, uh, uh, workshop uh, that they enrolled, and then that was a breaking point for me where I figured out that. Uh, uh, I do have some talent and I do have some interest in this and from that point actually I was my first year in high school at that moment I never found anything else in my life that would be so exciting for me uh, the only thing that actually changed is that I moved from still photography to film photography when I enrolled the academy but that's basically the only thing that uh, I ever ever did uh, yeah <laughs> Uh, and no, uh, very aptly put. And uh, when we talk about strife and conflict and war, uh, I would want Rana to uh, you know take this further because who else to uh, uh, voice that? But while I am uh, with Boyana, I just want to add uh, one. Ask you about one more thing over here. You have been uh, to a film academy. So while we are lamenting about the lack of women in professions and especially becoming DOPs and cinematographers, what is the kind of mentality of young women, of girl students in an academy? Do you think uh, uh, the, the, in, in terms of the percentage of the girls that are there, are, are women represented in the academy? Yeah, it's a, it's very interesting actually. So my generation, uh, and I was born in the 80s. Uh, it's been a, it's been some kind of a thinking that cinematography is completely male job, and it was uh, very by by accident to 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 go to the academy. And uh, there's been less and less girls then, but nowadays we have more girls uh, than ever enrolling film academies. Uh, so the figures right now are double or maybe even more than 50 percent uh, of uh, everyone enrolling in the academy are women women but the problem is when they get the chance to work this percentage just lowers and then we all uh, finish uh, the academy that's not the problem but to get the chance to get the film to get the project and to 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 show what you can do those uh, chances are very low and very down and i think right now even it was, uh, I mean, this is such a specific job. You have to love this. You have to be very, how to say, very passionate about this because this job is very, very hard, uh, like many others in, in film industry. But uh, uh, mm -hmm. unless you're really uh, fighting uh, to, not just to success, it's, it's not just a matter of success, but to show your strength and to show that you're really into that, uh, this is way where things are dropping. Um, I think it's, a, it's about what you have to give uh, to, to, to be in a position uh, to end up working really in the industry. Right. Uh, let me move to Rana. Uh, Rana, you have been from a country which has been driven by strife for a long time. You know, we are in the middle of a big conflict right now. Uh, being raised in Lebanon, you went out, you went to Paris to learn more. Uh, 
and I, when I spoke to you last week, I learned that you are the only sound designer uh, in Lebanon. So uh, tell me a, a, a little bit more about it. In a country where uh, people are almost struggling to make films, a woman like you stands up and chooses to be, uh, you know, chooses to make such a strong choice. Uh, if it's a, it's a long uh, answer, I hope I won't take the two hours. We have all the <laughs> but, time. Uh, <laughs> uh, listen, to do anything in, uh, in, a, in a war zone is extremely difficult and it needs a lot of strength. Uh, I was lucky because my parents were very supportive and my dad was extremely supportive in doing whatever I want. It started, my journey started in the shelters in 1982 with the Israeli invasion of Beirut. I was six and I was really afraid and I didn't know, understand what's happening. Uh, and we had like, my parents had like this radio cassette that they were listening to news all day. So I discovered recordings on a tape recorder. I was recording everything that's happening in the shelters and listening to it again. And then when I did psychotherapy, I discovered that uh, this was my way to, um, to be aware that I'm still alive. This is my sound was the only proof that we are still alive and they, that we are not dead. Uh, so, um, it wasn't a coincidence that I chose sound to do my career and to do to, to, to build my path through sounds because for me, really sound is the identity of the places, the persons, the city, the sound of the cities because my city is really suffering uh, since I was born until now. Beirut is really suffering and what this is why I came back from Paris because I needed to sound Beirut, to have the sound of the city, the sound of Lebanon. Because if we have a sound, if we have a voice, if the city has a voice, uh, I think the city will never collapse. It can collapse politically, it can collapse like geopolitics. But uh, we are here and we still have voices. And especially women, we still have voices. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> that's it. No, but when you started off working, you know, I mean, I can imagine uh, a girl in her teens standing with a boom, uh, you know, in a set full of men. Uh, I, I want to know, you know, the, what, what transpired there, you know, was, what was the kind of discrimination that you faced on set? And I'll come back to Bayana on this eventually. But while we are on you, you know, being this <laughs> girl in a set full of men, who almost look at you as if, uh, you know, you, 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 you're just uh, here to have fun. Uh, listen, when I started, it was really difficult to find a job, really, but because the cinema industry was really non-existent. So it was to work on a cinema, on a movie, it was like a dream. So when I applied to several jobs, it was, they were looking at me, do you, you sound, why don't you, why don't you go, do a presentatives on, on TV, why don't you act? Do something, why do you wanna do sound? They were so shocked, so I was so angry. So my anger was building up. And I had like a very funny story when I was boom operator in a film and it was really a huge film with a really great Egyptian director. It was really the chance of my lifetime. And uh, the man on set was, why are you, why are you holding this boom? Any man can do it. So that's my job. So, you know, they were trying to be kind, but it was at the same time very sexist. And no, no, a woman cannot hold a boom. And no, I can't do that. So it was this poor little thing uh, holding and having to do like physical actions on set. So it was, I was, and now it's very funny for me. It's really funny because everybody was really surprised. Why do you want to do sound? And it was like they were concerned. Why do you want to do a man's job? Why? <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was now it's funny, uh, uh, but this anger I had at the time really helped me because, like, I put like a little dragon on my shoulder, and it's uh, there's a tattoo of a dragon on my shoulder. So, everyone that talks to me, I will 
you know so i had like to to put a, a mask on and i have a snake here so <laughs> so i did like this paranoia critique that dali always talks about that no one comes near me because i ca i have fire <laughs> I, I i remember there was also a director or a producer who told you that as a woman do you hear the same things that we do <laughs> yeah. yeah it was like my experiences in sound design and like i had like a home studio because this was my first experiences so he was very angry that i was giving him uh, he was an old documentary filmmaker and he said he was very angry that I, I was giving him advice. So he didn't, I think he had like problem listening himself. So he said, are you really sure that women and men listens the same way? Do, are you, uh, do, don't you, don't you feel that you, you hear differently? <laughs> so, no, you hear differently because you have something here. <laughs> but we, apparently I think that the ear, so I was, like, um, I did some research, I remember, and I did photocopy for him just to, to, to have a scientific proof that the ear is the ear. There's no female ear and masculine ear. <laughs> 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 you know, we all have the middle ear, the, the external and the, you know, so it was, now it's very funny, but at the time you really have to be very strong to overcome this. Great. Uh, now that we are talking about professions, Editing is one thing uh, which has been traditionally better represented by uh, women than other professions. Of course, all this is comparative. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a study in the UK which was published uh, in, uh, at the Berlin Film Festival this year says that gender parity or gender equality in cinema will happen by 2085, according to statistics. But Sanyukta, uh, in India, we have had a tradition of women editors. Do you think they have been uh, better represented than uh, other professions, or is it just tokenist? Deep down, um, the story is something else. No, uh, I mean, the representation is uh, better, but I still see it as tokenistic, you know. Um, it's 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 sad and it's true that you know in the costume department or the assistant director department they'll have a lot of women but in the post production department you know you will not see women you won't have toilets you won't even have like bathrooms for us to an extent you'll have to say like hey you know i need a bathroom and they'll say like hey you're the only girl i was like okay so i'll get another assistant in you know that might just get me a bathroom right and it still happens it still happens it's not like it does not and also, generally, I feel editing is a, you know, a meditative job, a job where you're cleaning every morning, you're just cleaning and cleaning and cleaning. I think it comes very uh, inherently within a woman, you know, uh, but that does not take it away from the fact that there always there's always going to be more men in this uh, line of business, because, you know, um, I don't think uh, women in tech are really taken seriously especially in the uh, film fraternity. You know, I've had situations where, you know, men have asked me, do you know how to connect a hard drive? Do you know how to connect a hard drive? Or they come and ask me, uh, are you the producer? Because the editor is not here yet. And I'm like, no, I am the editor and I know this. Can you leave? And that, you know, uh, shakes them off. And they keep standing, waiting for me to, you know, say stuff like, oh, are you sure you know how to do this? I mean, this happens even today in a city like Bombay where, you know, films are made every day, every day. Um, you know, what's happened in India is I try to reach out to filmmakers down south and in the east. Um, there aren't any women there. There are like one or two of them in the south specifically, which, which actually, you know, the south of India is a progressive uh, state in everyone's mind. But the entire fraternity is just men. Even assistant directors are just emerging there as women. Even costume directors are just emerging as women. Whereas in the Hindi film industry, at least there are enough women in on set. But at the editing stage, I, I mean, I met really big producers who told me, hey, you know what? I mean, I'm happy you can do this, but there aren't any women. Like really big guys have told me this. And uh, I feel the ratio is just like, it sounds great. But it's very small. It's very small. Uh, it's actually, uh, 
as tokenistic as it can be even in you know uh, a city like bombay which is liberal as a matter of fact no it's it is ironic because uh, these stereotypes that women in technology don't go together or women are not prone to physical labor uh, do still exist strongly and a similar uh, stereotype is that women are good at costumes uh, that is something that they have a natural progression towards and uh, Madeline has been doing this for decades now. I mean, let me just uh, talk a little bit about her. Uh, all of us are, uh, you know, uh, Amelie, uh, Madeline has a cult following in India, uh, if you might. I mean, I'm sure it has a cult following all over the world, but especially in India. Uh, 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 Jackie uh, was, uh, Madeline was nominated for the Academy Award for best costume design uh, for Jackie she won uh, the bafta uh, so you've been there for a long time uh, madeline and you've seen it evolve over decades you have been at the top of your game how has it, how has it changed i'm very first i have to say my admiration to the women which are in such difficult condition and the strength they have to fight to be free in, from inside because it's they are surrounded by so hard context so i feel very lucky even if nothing is you know nothing is perfect and we still have to fight to be heard but wow ladies <clears throat> well it's changed of course it has changed for from from the very beginning of my um, Impl uh, professional implication, but we still have a lot to do. We still have a lot to work on <clears throat> to be well for equality. I mean, we're different, of course. The ears are different because the sensitivity is different, but we are still have the same ears. And um, <clears throat> I know in, in our department, as uh, has been said, of course, it's more it's, it's uh, dominantly fem female, and we have very few. Um, men in it and it's very important for me to have men in it too because it's it's not a question of being more powerful just to be heard as the same you know at the same title um i think it's from the beginning a work which has been from female because it was uh related to to the clothes and to the the uh, the, the, the well even the washing see like the mother did and uh to make it I understand that uh, as an artistic collaboration, it's been not so easy. I think it's changing now, but it's slowly changing, maybe quicker here than in the countries which are fighting so much for freedom. Uh, we've, we're lucky. I, I hope we are at the level of this chance that we have to be fighting for ideas, but not in, in, a, in a war context. Uh, but while we are with you uh, on Europe, apart from costume design, say in a, a faculty like production design, uh, do you think there's enough uh, women representation? Um, for production design, it's more and more, it's growing up now. Uh, but I can see from, I would say, five years, uh, women, young women coming to the camera, to uh, even to the machinery you say that when you help yeah with the light there are more and more coming from from the schools of uh, cinema of course but they are now they are welcome in the cruise they are very few of course in the proportion but they are it, it's rising up and i'm very happy of that and they are welcome but they have to fight i was hearing the <clears throat> uh Boyana, and it's true that I recently made a, um, worked on a movie where the DOP was a woman, and I could see every day that she has to she has to find to defend the the responsibility, the the, the rule, and uh, and the authority some somewhere the, the natural authority of saying that's what I want to be able to give what I have to give to the image. 
And it's, I mean, it was obvious. Uh, she cha she chose the, the crew around her, so the men were, they were supporting, but it was always a fight. Right. And when we have to fight like that, uh, Manas, especially when you're leading a crew, when you're, when you're yeah. the director, when you're the captain of the ship, and you have an entire team looking at you, uh, coming out too strong, coming out too aggressive, is something, is it something that men have a resistance to? Do they perceive you to be too aggressive, too strong, you know? Uh, you're too, do people tell you that you're too strong for a woman? Um, actually, I'm thinking when during that we were making the summer there in Becker stage, we had a five women in the, in the whole team, not on the set, in the Becker stage. Just before starting the movie, I didn't take attention what the men's asking. I, of course, they were asking so many things. But the main important thing, I thought I need the, uh, the women in my team with the, all their self-confidence to be there. Because just I told them, listen, yes, we are going to make a movie. If, if our movie is, is, is not good, definitely so many women, they will lose all opportunity. If we will do our best, we will make a good movie, we will give more chance to the other women to join to the cinema industry. When they try, they, when they, we make a good movie, definitely they will, maybe a little bit, they will change their uh, mindset as a, yeah, women can do it. And I remember before the film, I told them, look, we are not just fighting for ourselves, we are fighting for the other women, which is in the, uh, they're coming uh, in this way, in this path. And any movie I'm starting, I'm not thinking definitely all the time. It's just full of the pressure of the, um, what they want. Before, as, as I said, um, you as a woman, doesn't matter what you want, what you want to do. And you have to listen what, what they are asking you. And just I stopped to thinking what they were asking us, just I thought, just we have to have uh, be so powerful and support each other on the set to do our best. Definitely, this is a good result, and they can't ignore us anymore. And and uh, definitely, um, as a woman, when I'm going set, sometimes you know, uh, uh, well, I remember um, always they t they tell the director as a man, as a director, okay, uh, Mister to do something always. I remember some of the, my colleagues, different projects, uh, they didn't say, okay, ma'am, we did this. They say, mister, mister, all the time. I said, why are you telling me I'm a woman, I'm not a man? Said, but we used to say all the time, this is as a man. And mister to do on, um, yes, we're giving the sum of the, I don't know how, how, how to explain. So on our TV, are working with you, but still they're using the men. I told them, look, better just use my small, uh, short name and I don't need to just, as a respect, put the men's, uh, men's title to me. And uh, it's, it's still, uh, I, I remember the last time I was uh, shooting in Turkey, until end of the uh, shooting, I couldn't change my sound designer mindset. Until end of the film, I was a man. <laughs> <laughs> and really, they didn't change at all. But, um, and uh, through the, all those my amazing colleagues they spoke, I got to understand each of us, there was a one man influence in our lives. And I'm thinking for to be succeed, uh, the women achieve, we need more men as a feminist. You know, my father right. ex lives, uh, uh, my, my father lives like, like many years ago, but her mindset, it was not like the traditional one. And most of us here, I'm thinking just through that when my amazing colleague just explained, I got to understand, oh my God, this is the big influence if your dad trusts you and give you the opportunity to just to do something. Look, we got the amazing mess message. Uh, it, it was kind of the similar, you know, supporting by the family, just do whatever you want. This is the best message. I'm, I'm asking all the men in the salon to tell the old daughters, just do whatever you want. This is the best message for all the girls. Because when you understand you, don't, you can't do it, some people, depends on um, how grown up, where grown up, 
depends on their resilience. Definitely, it, it affects on their life. We need more men to, as a father, as a brother, as a, as a family around us, and uh, to understand there is no difference. There is, there is no difference. Yeah, there is difference bi uh, biologically, but sometimes mentally, as a, as a person writing, uh, and uh, and all of my writing comes from the documentary and based on the uh, on their mentality, I got they are more stronger. No, this is so important. And uh, uh, Rana, you have worked with your husband. You've collaborated with your ex-husband now on a lot of projects. You have a team, I guess, where you work with men uh, who are a part of your sound team. So as uh, uh, Mena said, we, we should thrive to create an environment which is conducive to each other. As in, uh, women, men are equal stakeholders in this battle of gender in, in gender equality. Uh, listen, now I, uh, with all the years that passed, but I really do agree with uh, Mahanas because really, really, uh, the strong part of, of our stamina is when I was always afraid, I knew that my father is somewhere behind me and he's going to be there. Uh, and if I need like an advice, he's going to be there to give me advices all the way. And this is what he did all his life. Uh, but uh, what is very important now, uh, now I'm, a, I'm in a state of mind, I collaborate with my ex-husband, we're really best friend. And this is a very, it's a deep learning experience that that uh, I learned from him that we have a child in common we do not love each other anymore but we still respect each other and this is really a resume of life we cannot uh, you know dissociate cinema and art from everyday life so this is this is a learning experience that that will will really affect the way I do sound and the way he does music as well uh, so uh, now uh, in the studio we are more women than men. Um, I, I I I didn't I didn't did, did it on purpose. I I guess it was uh, unconsciously because the Foley artist is a woman. Our recording mixer is a woman. The dialogue editor is a woman. I I think it was unconscious. How, how but, many uh, women in your team and how many men? Two. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, accept the musician or my ex-husband is a musician but in the sound team we have the dialogue uh, the sfx editor and uh, the sound editor another sound editor are are men uh, but uh, but now now and i really really appreciate what mahana said now we are at a state where the planet is really going mad and the violence is everywhere uh, that I don't know if we should really tackle the um, only women and men, you know, but it's individual, respecting the individual. In our part of the world, the individual is not respected. We're always part of a clan. You know, you have to be Muslim or Christian or anti or pro. So, uh, you know, the, the individual, the individual respect is really important for me now. Like, like beautiful person, man or woman, are the people we need that respect individuality, respect freedom, uh, respect the way uh, the, uh, happiness. You know, the, the being happy is being is having challenges. Happiness is like always like smiling like a fool. You know, uh, happiness is when you have struggle to challenge, when you have sad days when you have to change the world you're living in or try to change something. So we need more individuals, men, women, whatever, to really fight the fight. And now, you know, if we, we remove those divisions, it will, I think for me it will be more healthy to remove the division because last thing I want to say, I, I discovered now when we talk about the problems in, on the mid, if, on the middle, in the Middle East and especially in Lebanon, that I think the problems that we divided the rights, you know, this division of rights is a really catastrophe. There's no, there's the human right, uh, the woman right, the children right, the gay right, the, you know, but the right is the right. Is the right. You cannot yeah. divide rights. So we need individuals. We need like to stop the madness because we really need this, this voices. That's my opinion. No, yeah, actually, and in, in an ideal world, we should not have such panel discussions anymore. 
it should be a non issue <laughs> we who we it's unfortunate that we are living in a world where these things have to be discussed and these things have to be brought to the forefront and talked about to sensitize people about it uh, i want to go to boyana right now boyana uh, cinematography is considered a profession which it's perceived as something which requires physical labor is that the reason why uh, uh, directors producers are a little bit discriminated or a little bit skeptical about having women as dops you, you you know i probably told you or maybe i didn't but my favorite argument uh, when i speak about physical ability of uh, holding a camera is how heavy is a kid if you are good or heavy to to have a kid to carry it the whole day then you can carry a camera as well and i think it's uh, more of a i think it's more of a matter of uh, yeah. your intentions what you want to be in your life i think uh, being a being a mother and sitting at home is something if you decide to be that for me it's very good it's your decision my decision was to be on set and uh, i don't feel that and and of course if something is too challenging for us we always have camera operators we always have people we have the equipment we have grip it's not that we have to be body bodybuilders so strong uh, i think our brains are more into cre creative parts i mean i have to figure out how i'm going to visualize uh, how i'm going to make this photography to tell a story not physically to make this photography physically making photography is easy there are so many different stuff that we can that we can work but uh, i think creatively thinking that's that's my job that's meaning being director of photography not being uh, just you know a strong uh, strong one and i was thinking when when um, uh, when rana was talking about uh, being individual i was thinking you know this is exactly why we are making films i mean we are actually telling stories sharing stories uh, about uh, anything that's happening in in our lives in other lives and this this is somehow how we impact uh, the world uh, without being divided you know in all of this and while um, well yes i i'm from serbia but i'm also very very well aware of the world situation because i'm in an international um, federation of cinematographers and it is similar thing all around the world uh and uh, while we are talking about being on set the first thing that they that they figure out being on set is that i'm not uh, allowed to be too emotional that uh, i cannot be too emotional on set that i have to be Uh, I have to be respectful. I have to be good working. I have to pay attention on everything that's happening. I cannot just mess around the set and uh, uh, doing uh, doing things that are not supposed because every set has its rules. But then the other thing, but when those small torpedoes were coming from uh, different parts, my my first feeling was don't get too emotional. Do, do not be a crybaby. Otherwise. you will be say oh she's a woman she's too emotional to die and it would be another thing on the other hand i am emotional in a way that i don't have my own emotions but i have to deal with that i have to find more of a charming ways to deal with the things that are going on and how how if some torpedo comes my way how i'm going to just stop it on a charming way and say hey, cool and uh, i i spoke with you oh, earlier uh, when i was when i was um, very small i started uh, and and yes and all my mentors were men all mentors that gave me the opportunity to come to set were men and they gave me that opportunity and when i was that small lady small girl on a set uh, less than 20 years uh, ago and uh, i remember uh, everyone you know having uh, having everything and um, i was i was i was thinking just sit calm look around and see how everyone is dealing with with this and i had some people you know being not not so good but then uh, then after many years now they're 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 my friends even they're even my friends now it's not that i just said okay i forgive you it's not about forgiveness it's more about uh, persistence that you're really into this and that you really want to work in in in, in this otherwise i don't think that any job any position any description cannot work without you really wanting to be part of this uh this industry or film so 
And regarding France, for example, France has the biggest uh, numbers, the, the best situation regarding women cinematographer. This is because you have a great uh, um, cinema, cinema tradition. And uh, there is a collective, Fama la Camera, uh, that, that is actually something that we should look up and give this opportunity to, to other people to come on set and to be younger me 20 years ago. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's an interesting insight. Uh, and I, uh, I, to just take this argument further, how does having a family and being a mother complicate uh, these roles. And I want uh, Madeline and uh, Rana to uh, respond to this. Because men are supposed to get better with age. Uh, but women are supposed to be bowed down. They're supposed to, you know, their lives should be complicated with marriage and having kids and all that. Madeline first. OK. I mean, it's, it's, of course, it's difficult because you're so much involved in your work in, in this kind of professional choices and it's difficult to be there and there and um and it's difficult for the children too because you're very you're sometimes far away but it's possible i mean i think it's more possible now that the rules are a bit changing and and some some men are taking a part of the education and 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 stay with the children when you leave. Um, for myself, I've been I've been alone to to grow my. I don't you don't say grow how to say to to um, try to say that I was alone. So I did the both of of things. I, I was in the in the professional uh, life, and I was also a mother and. Most of the time when I didn't work, I was full time with her. But it's, I mean, it's possible. But of course, it's more difficult because it's more difficult because it's, it's very involving these, these professions, of course. But all the women here, they know how much it's involving to be uh, in the cinema industry. Rana, you want to add something? Uh, I, I, like Madeleine said, it's really difficult for from the logistic part, and you always feel guilty because you have this, you know, uh, un collective unconscious that uh, you should be with your child all day. But I don't want to be uh, with my child all day uh, because <laughs> if I'm not healthy, he won't. If I'm not mentally healthy, he won't. He will be sad. Uh, so now he's 13 and he's, uh, I think he's okay. <laughs> and uh, I was lucky because in post-production, I, I took him with me to the studio. So I was in this logistical part, I was lucky and my husband and now ex-husband was really there all the time. So we were supporting each other. Um, but it's really important. It's really, uh, uh, now, now, but he, he's becoming more and more independent. It's really it uh, it it was um, uh, it gave me a lot in uh, in my in my path because I don't like to say career in my path because really hearing a child and listening to yourself while raising a child uh, it was a great learning experience that uh, and don't listen to the guilt feeling always because you always feel guilty as a mother while working as a working mother is always guilty. Uh, but uh, but listening to this voice and and really learning from that experience as a mother, now it gave me a lot of maturity. I I, I love it. <laughs> yes, and it gives Can you. I... A, 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 it it makes it uh, it makes it more relative. I mean, the the involvement you have with the work because it's something uh, growing up here, and it gives you the strength, as you say. Yeah. Right, so it Can only add adds something? to you as an artist. Sorry? No, I said it, it only uh, adds to you as a professional, as an artist. Mena, you wanted to, to add something? Yes, I'd love to add something because everybody at the first, they're asking you should be a mother. And then this is the main uh, point in your life, you should be a mother. But I'm thinking not so many women or men, actually, most of them, they are not material for marriage. Not any woman must give a birth. I'm, I got to understand. I know I'm taking care of so many different kids right now, but I never had kids for my own. And because I thought 
I don't want. I'm not the material for to be a mom just for one kid. Because maybe through the film, I can be a mom for so many kids. And which is the society pushing you? Oh, still you didn't get married? Still you didn't have a baby? Oh, it's, you know, it's, I'm thinking this, this label sure. for the women, you have to be a mom, you have to be this, you have to, this is all makes you kind of the, you know, a little bit different. No, I right. think we mm -hmm. must change our mentality. Not so many men and women. They don't want even, they don't material of the marriage or to be a dad or mom. And it's not my first uh, priority to be at first mom and then filmmaker and to take care. No, I decided I don't want to be a mom. I'm a mom for so many kids. I love it. And I love to do my best for all those kids in the future. They don't have a um, horrible childhood, horrible life like us. Because when I experienced what we did, I'm trying to, what's the next generation? All those little kids growing up, I don't want to be like us. They can, you know, this is the Rana said, more individual people respect, they want what they want. And I hate it when the people thinking, as a woman, my first aid must be a good mom. And then job. It has to be a choice. And, yeah, mm -hmm. please, when you ask, please go. Yeah, it has to be a choice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, I think also it is a personal choice. It is a right. personal choice of us as a person. So this is the first thing. And then after that, you can find what's your professional yeah. life and if you can fit or not with the kids. But there's a first personal choice. And interesting thing in Serbia, uh, out of Serbian society of cinematographers, there is only one kid, one lady having one kid of the whole Serbia, of six, seven million of us, only one. And there is one colorist with a kid and one camera assistant. So three total, but uh, only one in a Serbian society of cinematographers. And I think it implies that it implies something. It it says something, but I think it is also completely a personal choice that uh, that everyone should have. I want it or I don't want it. And also, there's been a Spanish cinematographer uh, telling us at some of the panels that uh, she was allowed to take her baby on a set. So they gave her a nursing. They gave her um, a babysitter on a set in, a, in some special um, uh, place, and uh, she was okay. I mean, it's even possible if everyone wants to give you possibility, there are so many possible uh, situations that you can have kids if you want. So first a personal choice, and then you figure out if you want how to survive in this profession with a kid. No, absolutely. What we are talking about here really is uh, the power to choose, the power to have a choice, and the ability to break a stereotype. You know, it is nothing is nothing ought to be. You know, you should only have the freedom to make the choices that you have. Uh, Sanyukta, there is a different aspect to this, which I want you to uh, reflect upon a little bit, is the economic disparity, you know, in terms of the remuneration that female professionals get. Uh, is there a kind of a mindset that you have to deal with? Um, yeah, this is like quite interesting. Um, you know, uh, even today, actually, I have to deal with it. Uh, for some reason, they assume that uh, I'm a woman who doesn't need uh, so much money because I'll just marry someone rich. You know, oh, yeah, you know, your boyfriend's a doctor. What does it matter? And these are, these are assistant directors who talk to me. Forget about the directors. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I pay my bills. Do I need to announce it to you? Do I need to announce? Why do I need money? So, uh, it's, it's you know, I'm uh, coming back to what Menaz, uh, Menaz said, that, you know, uh, it comes down to your family and the feminism they've taught you. You have to be taught this from childhood. It can't, uh, you don't evolve randomly. Obviously, my father and mother made sure you know, I'm standing behind you. I remember my father, my mother saying that, you know, make sure all of y'all are fed the same amount of food, whether it's a boy or a girl, all of y'all are fed together. You know, a boy can't get food before you, a boy, you know, there are so many rules in the society which are imbibed in, in religion or politics or whatever, you know, and uh, uh, it's it all boils down to how much of uh, equality you've been taught at home. And that shows even at workforce, you know, at uh, workforce for some reason. Okay, thanks to, you know, the corporates coming in with like Netflix and Amazon, our pay scales have become regulated and equal. 
but you know you still are question ki oh she's a uh, yeah do we need to give her so much money you know does she uh, require it but uh, i personally have not faced it lately i really had like uh, actually i have been lucky that uh, lucky that some really nice filmmakers have uh, hired me and they are actually men and they are actually feminists by themselves because i realized that when a man is hiring me in a position of power he i'm sure sees me as equal and i've been in crews where there only men right there aren't any women whether it's you know whether it's uh, pata lok or tumbar or whatever my body of work is uh, i realized that because of these men my pay scales are not questioned now you know but this this entity uh, exists uh, i'm sure and uh, you can't do much about it but live with it or fight it in your own mind and you just go like hey you know what i want this and this is how i expect from it and uh, not be bothered what with what those guys are getting paid just make sure that what i make sure is every morning i'm at work and i hustle as relentlessly as possible so that all the work that comes to me has to come to me i'm fighting equal number of men at work as well right because in the industry the number of film editor men is a large portion and female editors is this much we are like 10 of us even if it's 10 of us we are also happy like oh my god we are 10 of us i'm like no but we are still battling a uh, you know a war so the disparity exists but you know uh, because of the corporates coming in or something of that sort or also the filmmakers as i said they reduced it at least i have been lucky now but i'm sure it does exist okay uh, uh let us steer over to something else now uh you know uh mahnas uh there is uh you know there is always uh, an expectation from a woman that when she makes something when she writes something when uh, uh a work comes out of her it's it's supposed to be more sensitive it's supposed to be more nuanced you know her uh as a woman her attention to details her susceptibility her vulnerability vulnerability finds utterance in her work do you think mm-hmm. and do you think of anything from your films uh which uh, has been carved out by the virtue of you being a woman sorry just repeat the last part because i just dropped something i i want you to uh, you know look at your films look at your work and just try to imagine yeah. uh, this came out of me only because of what i felt as a woman this would not have i would not have made it this way or i would not have said it this way if i was a man uh actually i'm a feminist i'm telling this and i'm fighting for that <laughs> Uh, for so many years i did they use this name but through the something horrible happened i got understand yeah i have to fight for that i have to understand how to fight as a uh, as a woman i try as a as a feminist woman i try to not thinking uh, if i were a man how could i make a movie if i as a woman just i'm thinking what is the right as for the human in this in this case and I remember when I was making some mother my producer at the same time had another movie with uh, producer another movie with uh, another man as a director but the both movie they came out and he watched it and he said oh it's amazing if nobody doesn't know both of you they can totally they will uh, they they couldn't recognize which movie made uh, the women made it which movie the men made it because in his uh, in his movie it was so emotional more than mine and everybody told me your movie is so cold and so a little bit tough and his movie was so emotional and i was so surprised to hear from the the others at the beginning they didn't recognize the director is a woman or man and really believe me whenever i'm writing uh, definitely it comes from the my experience the my existence as a woman in the society which is upcycled by the so many covers i don't know religion politics anything's covering my hair and uh, i shouldn't be but at the same time when i'm writing 
I'm not thinking what the women's thinking, what the human, humanity for me is so important. Right. Because uh, if you watch the Sun Mother, and uh, just yesterday, I, uh, I think she, one of the journalists asked me, why for Sun Mother, you choose the son and mother, you didn't choose the mother and daughter? <laughs> What's the question? And uh, why you didn't choose the, the other pair in the movie? And I was thinking because the all all those problems comes from their relationship, son and mother, and it affects the women's life and the men's life as well at the same time. I'm thinking as a before I said we need more men as a feminist, we need more people as a as a to understand any any problem, any issue, it happens for women. Definitely it calls for men as well. It's not just for me. Right. As a woman. No, it is a yeah. stereotype as much. I mean, that women exactly. are sensitive and uh, men ought to be more uh, aggressive and more uh, less sensitive. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, uh, a, a, a part of the problem is also a lot of men have uh, issues, have mental issues because of the pressure of wanting to be strong, of wanting to be aggressive, because that is how they are perceived as. As men, they are not supposed to feel weak, they are not supposed to cry, and women are not, are supposed to be, are supposed to be passive, are supposed to be submissive. So what we are actually fighting against is, uh, is a system where there is gender equality, where we break the age-old stereotypes where men are supposed to be like this and women are supposed to be like that. Rana said a very beautiful thing the other day that uh, there is a man in every woman and there's a woman in every man. And that is uh, the balance that we uh, should try to achieve. Rana, do you want to elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, the, the main problem nowadays is stereotypes, you know, they are I don't I don't understand it anymore. Really, my brain doesn't understand it anymore. Uh, this is my limit. Uh, that sensitivity and uh, and even femininity, masculinity, those concepts now we should I think they we should like update those concepts because uh, they are very old now. Yeah, uh, exactly. the way we see it, the way we hear it. I think for me, because I love sound and sound is really my passion, this is my real passion in life, that listening, listening, the, fa the act of listening, we don't do it enough. Uh, this, is, uh, this is when we listen carefully to the others, to our cities, to our problems, to our bodies, to our sexuality, to our everything, um, to our demons even, to our bad sides. Uh, we have to listen to it and embrace it. And when we embrace not life, we don't just Quite face true. life. Uh, it's uh, the, it will solve a lot of problems. Really, it will solve a lot of problems. So um, that's why the division between men and women. I I refuse. I refuse it I, because, uh, mm. of course, there are like despotic men, and there. And unfortunately, there are despotic women. I had like terrible experiences myself with women directors as well. Uh, so, um, so you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter really. What I'm tending now really, really to believe that human beings needs to listen more carefully to each other. <laughs> so well said. So well said. Now, as this, we want to wind up this uh, in a bit, and I want to open it up uh, for a few questions uh, to the audience here and those watching us online. But in the last round, I want all of you uh, to uh, reflect upon, uh, ha will having women storytellers, will having women filmmakers and film professionals change, affect the global narrative? I want to just throw a few statistics again once uh, uh, I have them with me here. Uh, you know, while we were talking about the 8% cinematographers and the 9% composers, the study also shows that uh, when the director is a man, 53% of the writers are women. And when it is a man, it's only 12%. When the director is a woman, 
19% cinematographers are women, but when the director is a man, only 4% cinematographers are women. What I'm trying to say over here is having a man, having a, a man to be at the top of the hierarchy somehow defeats the purpose of having a well-represented unit. Uh, now, that is an observation, but having said that, I come back to my question. Will having uh, women filmmakers, will having women film professionals affect uh, the global narrative in cinema? And how? Maybe I can try to answer. We always had the very strong authors, uh, women, uh, women authors in uh, in history and cinema. And uh, uh, yes, the figures. Even if we reflect on Oscars last night, uh, the figures for a woman director and woman cinematographer only three ever in a 96 years old history of Oscar only three ever uh, cinematographers were nominated zero zero win. But I think it's. Uh, I think nowadays, uh, as, as we said before, uh, it's about stories that inspires us. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, I do believe if the woman has more opportunity, then those type of, those stories that inspire women will find uh, their way to to come more into our world. But um, uh, I think we should. Uh, I think the perfect uh, future is we stop talking about this men and women and we just make films. And as as uh, she said, uh, do not know even uh, who is a man, who is a woman. Just we make films, and that that should be a perfect uh, perfect future. Um, and everyone can be as sensitive as they feel and emotional. Exactly. Yeah. A word where uh, stereotypes uh, is to exist, you know, where we do not, we do not identify as men, women. Uh, this is the right time to open up questions from the audience. Your sound is one here, you have water, yeah? We're losing it now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah no? Sounds it's like the water. water. <laughs> it's like the water. Hello. Is this better? Yeah. Oh, yeah they, it's not. Uh, it's, it's not better. Lost sound at such a crucial point in the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. So what I was trying to say that we should ideally move towards an environment where. Issues such as this are completely irrelevant. Uh, we there is some so much more qualitative topics that we should explore over and get into discussions about, uh, and not lament over this. It's unfortunate, as I said, that we are today having uh, to you know have uh, panel discussions on uh, on this subject. In fact, in an ideal world, there should not be a Women's Day because every day is uh, a Women's Day. Uh, I open up the. I open up uh, the forum to a few questions from the audience. Yes, please. Can a mic uh, go there? Hi. Um, well, I'm a, a producer, film producer based out of Boston, and um, with my core team as women as well. And I love writing. I'm a writer as well, and I love writing women protagonist uh, stories. So I, as more than a question, I do want to highlight a challenge, which I think a lot of women here, I mean, by the way, you guys are, have inspiring stories and journeys. Thank you. So uh, with you guys will be able to resonate with. So um, even though I've been living in Boston for bo 20 years and I've been, with God's grace, successful in the corporate domain, my, uh, my, uh, the immediate family, yeah, the immediate friends and family, when I was getting into film industry just a few years ago, the questions that have I've faced are when I'm going out for shoot, have you filled the fridge with the food? What, are, what is happening with the, <laughs> who's going to uh, take care of the kids? So, you know, a lot of my friends, educated, you know, up, uh, upscale, higher class, you know, whatever you want to call it, friends have asked me, oh, your husband gives you so much liberty. You know, you, your husband gives you so much freedom. And a lot of the hard work that I do, with, I mean, all due respect to my husband, uh, he gets a lot of credit for it, you know? 
because he gives me freedom. I didn't know that freedom was supposed to be given to any woman by any man. Wasn't it our birthright? You know, so, so these kind of challenges, I'm sure, like whether your fridge is packed with food or not, um, uh, yes. you know, et cetera. And even my core team, all the women, we pack our fridge with food when we're traveling for shoot, uh, outdoor shoots, you know, for week long or shoots, et cetera. So I'm sure you can, you would have felt that from friends from till the day that my, um, I w my film was invited on Kapil Sharma's show till that day. With, again, my mom is someone who has raised me and my sister who lives in Australia. Both of us are independent uh, you know, businesswomen. She has raised us being financially independent. Still, we, every time I was going out, I was asked for, uh, uh, you know, about the kids, the core mother and family uh, homemaker Excellent. responsibility. Till that date, I was asked. So, um, but the, as a woman, how I worked through it with the gratitude that as a woman, I, uh, we come across as more trustworthy and authentic. So I can take that, you know, as a woman, um, uh, you know, we are ingrained to be multitasking. I'm sorry, maybe men are, but I, I, I thought, so there are, I thought of gratitude of other attributes, stereotyped attributes as a woman. Uh, that's right. how I had overcome. No, so well thank said. you. So so well said. And as I said, it's uh, you know the the women in the men are multitaskers, probably, uh, like the men in the women are, are the the ones who can do the physical labor. So all of us are a combination of this men and women, and that's what we should strive to be. Anybody else? A quick question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my question to a man is Mohammadi. Yeah. Uh, Mohammadi, can you tell me that, you know, uh, whether cinema can be used as a tool uh, for promoting, uh, you know, gender equality or, you know, uh, woman empowerment? So can you say a few, you know, uh, something about that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, definitely, because uh, uh, whether I, any movie I'm making, at the same time, I'm thinking what I'm telling, what I'm bringing the new story. And uh, this new story, maybe, the, maybe, maybe, maybe the, it opens a new discussion for the, for doesn't matter, the men and women, but it brings the new discussion about the new topics, which is you never can find in the men's narrative. Actually, for so many years, just we were watching the men's film. Um, we know the women doesn't, uh, for, for so many years, it was not so high number. They, they couldn't reach, for example, in the market very well. And I'm thinking uh, whatever I'm doing and uh, on the movie, mm, definitely they must. They must to bring and uh, all those change. I don't know if I gave the a right <laughs> the. the I gave the right answer or not, but whatever I'm doing, I'm not thinking uh, I'm doing as a women this, just I'm thinking I'm bringing the women's narrative, which is always right. we heard mostly the men's narrative. And uh, I think most of the women, if the, we have more women like that, the, 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 the insist about our narration, definitely it affects. Thank you so much. Uh, my next question to Andrej. Yeah, uh, being a cinematographer, you know, uh, there are new technology you know, uh, nowadays, you know, underwater photography and, you know, drone and so many things, you know, like in a tough situations. You know, what is your uh, advice to the young filmmakers who have been, you know, uh, enriching and they wanted to jump into such as, you know, adventurous and, you know, kind of uh, role which never thought of, uh, you know, kind of agenda which you've been talking about. So what do you say about that and advice to them and you know how engagement you wanted to say? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I think learn, learn, learn a lot, learning a lot, learning a lot, learning. I don't think that we all have to be skilled for each uh, thing that happens to fly drone, to go underwater, but uh, we should know about possibilities and then you hire right person for right position that you need. And uh, I think the key is in a constant learning. And nowadays, I can, I can, I, when I go back, um, uh, in a in a old school days where uh, the internet didn't exist, and you could learn from books that you have, 
or some magazine newspapers that will come probably one in a month or one in a I don't know how often um, you had to you had to learn and nowadays with internet and with all these possibilities that you can find the only thing that you cannot uh, um, accept is just to say I know everything and uh, every day there is a new techniques new technologies new camera developments new everything in the world and you have to be on top of that and you have to learn you you cannot stop learning that's my only advice and uh, my other advice is um, not not just to be proactive and to to try to work as much but uh, but uh, yes, do not uh, do not miss opportunities to to get uh, new things uh, into your life because everything changes so fast nowadays. So yes, learning, my main. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah, please. Uh, what I'm thinking is, uh, it's a uh, as a daughter or as a son, when you grow in a family. Uh, it's a lot of thing depends on how you grow, how you your childhood develop, and then when you go up to 12, 13, and then after you got your higher education, how you get that education, and then uh, it's all depends upon what culture, what uh, society, what surrounding atmosphere, is it that makes any difference in you? Like, is you are a man or you are woman? But if if they treat equally and if they go equally, it's, there is no limitation for man or woman. If they all are same. They all are created for enjoy the life. And they all should enjoy the life without any constraint. Uh, so I'm thinking like more it should be both equal. It's all the duties on more on our elders and on a family and on us, uh, the school and society and uh, everyone who create equal atmosphere first. And then definitely you will get a good result as a man and woman. Both will enjoy the life same way. I think what are my thinking? Great. Uh, you wanted to say something? Do you have a question? Hi. I'm from the industry since last 20 years. I'm working in Bollywood. Uh, actually, I've been to the other side of the filmmaking, that is uh, distribution and release. Uh, there I've handled almost, I've worked, I was associated with the UFO, which is the prominent digital cinema uh, in current scenario. Then I was associated with the Prasad and K. Sarah Sarah, they are the prominent distributor in the industry. Currently, I'm in post side. So my post studio, they are into uh, kind of, it's a school where they create the colorist. And I'm telling you, in current scenario, the female colorists are more than the uh, men colorists in our school. And the ratio of female technicians are growing day by day. So this is, I believe, in current scenario, it's not the same. Women are everywhere. And they are very strongly heading their area. I have headed myself as a country head, I, would, I have headed distribution area. So it all depends how you take it. There is no discrimination. I have a small, small poem to speak here, if you permit me, for females, especially for the females, if you okay. I'll just speak. It's in Hindi, hope you okay. <laughs> Ma'am. The poem is in Hindi. Yes, so please, yes. People here can understand at least. It's written by me for all the females. Nari. Nari tu shakti hai, tujhi se ubji bhakti hai. Har vedon ka saar hai tu. Dharti ki tarah sahti har bhar hai tu. Shiv vi shav hai jiske bina. उस मूल तत्व समान है तू स्वयं को जान शक्ति को पहचान माँ बेटी पत्नी दो दोस्त बहन हर रूप में सदियों से तूने है सबको संभाला ना समझ खुद को कमजोर या अबला तू तेज है तू तप है तू संयम है तू स्वाभिमान है तू ध्यान है तू ही तो है ज्वाला बहती नदी से कलकल हवासी आजाद आकाशी विस्तृत तू ही तो है माया 
तू आदि तू ही अंत और तू ही अनंतों से अनंत बस खुद को पहचान दैट यू Thank you. Well said. In in a nutshell, it beckons the the strength in all of us. Uh, it asks the women to to beckon the strength inside them. Uh, as we you know uh, draw this discussion to a conclusion, uh, I just feel that as I said earlier, what we are striving for over here is a gender equ equal society, uh, a society that is free of the age old stereotypes. some of which are which are so ingrained in us that we are not even aware of them you know because we have been uh, uh, nursing them for generations now it is time that we break free of these shackles uh, all we need to be is empowered you know to to so that we are free of that stereotypes uh, and the mantle is as much upon men as it is upon the women over here because it is you who raise your daughters uh, your families in such a way that all of them strive to create that gender equal environment women for long time you know for for generations they have raised families they have raised children they have held families together they almost speak the language of men uh i remember meryl streep had once made an uh, a very interesting observation uh she said that uh women speak men they have held households together they have conducted the lives of men for generations that they speak men you know when you speak a language you you learn a language you know it only when you start dreaming in that language if you're learning french if you're learning spanish if you're learning a foreign language the language becomes yours when you know it so much you internalize it and you start dreaming in that language women speak men men still don't speak women <laughs> let us strive towards a world where all of us speak men and speak women thank you so much over to you thank you so much first of all ladies and gentlemen can i have a big round of applause for all of them please thank you manas thank you rana thank, thank you. you madeline thank you bojana thank you sanyukta and of course thank you jayprat sir for being us and you know so international women's day is a day where we all being celebrating it every year and today is this panel discussion has actually brought a lot of light into you know how this wonderful women out here are balancing work as well as their life and it's such an inspiration to hear so we are inspired by your thoughts by your work by your portfolio so thank you so much for being a part of this panel discussion we wholeheartedly from the entire nfdc team thank you for being uh, such a lovely you know being a panelist here thank you all right so we women i feel we don't need much you know we just feel that we need a equality we know that physically we cannot be um, equal to men we are not asking that we just need an equality in opportunity we need an equality in income we need an equality in our professional life and i feel if we both uh, men as well women it's nothing that men also goes through a lot it's that that you know this particular day has been dedicated to women but i feel every day is a women's day and every day is also a men's day so equal diversity which i feel is required so thank you so much and uh, today uh, we have a very distinguished guest between us so sir with your permission we would request um he is mr john mark sir charlotte he is a consul general of france sir we would request you please to come onto the dais and he especially come for this event so it's a pleasure to have you with us and i could please call our nfdc gm general manager d ramakrishna sir to please come onto the dais so it's a token of small appreciation from us to you sir can i have a round of applause for him please uh 
Uh, sir, we would request if you could say a few lines. Thank you very much. I will be very brief. Don't worry. Uh, I am here. Just uh, we are just men on the on the stage. I'm very shocked. <laughs> now, <clears throat> just to say that in in France, uh, we are taking more and more conscious of the problems of uh, gender equality. It's absolutely key. It's one of the main uh, fights of our president. Uh, it's becoming the, uh, a question uh, all over our society. Cinema is not uh, outside society. We've got a very active French cinema, you know that, but we discover little by little some very shocking behavior and uh, stereotypes uh, by French actors, male actors, and the women actors are denouncing that justly, rightly, because we think that part of the uh, solution is just, it's first to, to be conscious that there is a problem, there are problems, and we are fighting uh, more and more, and I ho we hope that things will evolve in the right uh, sense. What is very important also is to show that we have positive stories, not only to speak about women in cinema in a negative way because they were badly treated, but also very positive. And yesterday, uh, a French film made by a woman, a French uh, cine, uh, cineast and uh, c filmmaker, received an Oscar, and she's uh, very famous now in France, uh, Justine Trier. She made a just uh, impressive film, and she received an Oscar because she deserved it, not as a woman, but as a cinema, uh, as a filmmaker. And that's what is the most important thing uh, we have to realize. In Italy, uh, at the same time, there is a very uh, fashionable film made by a, again by a woman filmmaker, which talks about feminism, which has a great success. And these sort of positive stories are very important to show the way for the young generation so that behavior and such stereotypes evolves. So I'm very happy to be with you here because it's one of the big fights within French society and that's something we are always very happy to share with the other societies. I observe Bollywood, uh, Indian cinema, it's not only Bollywood but it's also Bollywood and uh, I think things are also evolving slowly. Uh, I remember films like uh, Darlings and others. It's very important that women are thinking more and more place and the place, the space they deserve, which is half of the, of, the, of the population, so half of the space in our society. Thank you very much for this. Thank you so much, sir. It means a lot that you are here. Thank you so much. And now I would request um, a special person, you know, who has actually taken care of this masterclass. Can I please have Ms. Gauri Nair, the head of masterclass, to come here on the dais and please speak a few words about her journey for this. Round of applause for her, please. Hi, uh, good evening to all. I mean, it's for good evening, yeah. Uh, now, not more to speak, maybe two, three minutes. Uh, just that uh, I'm sure my friends are seeing me. I just want to thank them all. Uh, on one call, they all came, and you know, most of them are in the travel and transit, and some of them are even in the midst of hospital cases, and you know, they are here. So, uh, just that deep. Deep down, I'm thanking each and everyone. And uh, just one line about each. Uh, my Mahanas, uh, she's been a woman inside and outside prison all her life. You know, that's the one line. And she never gave up, still not giving up, and making films. As and when she's out of the prison, and as and when she's having her time out of all this violence and insults and trauma, she's making films and talking to us. Thank you, Mahanas. Thank you for coming. And uh, Boyana, I mean, such a slender and sleek woman holding such big cameras and running. You know, it's for some time back, we wouldn't have thought about it. And now, yes, there are so many Boyanas here in front of us who's giving us light, 
to move forward. Thank you, Vena, for being with us. And yeah, my Rana, being in Middle East for quite a long time, being an artist in Arabic feelings for a long time, I completely understand what uh, Rana is up to because uh, in most of my films in the Arab world, they have called sound recordists and sound engineers, everybody from India. And you know what she has done, how she challenged herself to become a sound recordist or a sound designer all by herself in that kingdom. Thank you, Rana, for coming. And uh, Ma'am Madeline, she was uh, so much of in a time zone that she's not even able to connect to her internet, where I was cribbing and begging and almost torturing her to get a video from her. And uh, I'm sorry, ma'am, for that. And finally, you did it for me. Thanks a ton. And for that matter, everybody else did it for me. <laughs> so, ma'am, it's like, you know, nothing more to tell about her. You just go to her Wikipedia. You won't see one or two sentences about her. You won't see anything, but you will see her filmography, where it goes to, I mean, maybe before we all were born, I mean, most of us were born, and it start from there, and you scroll down and scroll down, and it never ends. Thank you, ma'am, for coming. And dearest Sanyukta, representing our own India, I know how you were held up. She was so busy that she could not even attend my call. Till today morning, I was so worried whether I lose her. I almost <laughs> tortured her in my messages. <laughs> Very sorry. I had like really crazy She have her well. amazing cat, uh, fell ill, and you know she got stuck there. And I respect that she's still here out of all that. And she's with us. Thank you, Sanyukta. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so sorry. Thank you for... No, no, no. I just... And uh, when I talk about... After coming from the speakers, I talk about the moderator, Mr. Jayaprat Desai. Um, even when I was going through the session, I got uh, messages from my dearest friends like, why a man, a moderator for a women's show? <laughs> and I would like to reply or respond on the stage to everybody who's here, as well whoever is watching this in YouTube or website of, website of NFTC, he's here to honor women. He's here to celebrate women. Mr. Jayaprat Desai is coming with a film soon, another two months. It's all ready for clearance. Fir I <laughs> Haseen Dilruba, right? Yeah, that's the name of the film. And leading by a woman. So who else can do this job today? I think that justifies. Thank you, Jayaprat, that you are here. When, you know, he was uh, totally on a busy schedule. So he could not give me responses in message as and when I wanted. And my messages were like paragraphs. Those whoever know me know that. So finally, I called him and I said, you, could, you have to give me a response. Then he made sure he's giving that also. OK, yes, I will do it. Coming, done. And finally, he made it. Thank you, Jayaprat. And to the entire team who is whoever here, especially my first, my NFTC team, as and when there is any program happening, you have any work there or not, I'm sure that you will make sure you will be here in the seats. So even if no audience are here, I'm sure that you are here. Thank you so much. And to all the guests and visitors who came here to grace this occasion. And uh, from the questions itself, I could make out that, you know, you really got into the session. And anybody and everyone who is viewing it uh, through the website and YouTube, to everyone, thank you so much uh, that you are with us. And uh, one more thing, this I would have told in the beginning, but you know, I was a uh, little panic mm. to start with. Jaita, she was telling me like, uh, now I'll, I'll give time, I need to speak about her. She told that I'm the mastermind behind this. Actually, I was ready because she knew that I shall use this word. She used it in GM's cabin also. 
Actually, thank you, Cheda, for all the love that you gave, all the friendship that you gave. She's more than a colleague. Uh, she is the one, actually, who initiated this. She is the one who came to me and said she need a panel on Women's Day. And we went to Ramasar's room, and uh, like the discussions were on. And I was like, yeah, anybody will bring, and we'll have a, you know, as usual, we'll have a discussion, panel, or master class, or whatever. Then Ramasar came and said, no, you're doing a virtual session this time. And I was stuck, because I didn't have a clue about it. And I looked at him, like, in all kind of, you know, my face was deserving all kind of sympathy. That was the look I gave him. I still remember myself. And he gave me nothing to worry. I'll take care. I'll take care of the technical part. And Jayda told me, I'm here, nothing to worry. So you guys tell me now who is the mastermind <laughs> behind it. So it's, uh, I'm, I'm just a person who executed it. And over a message and over a call, all my friends came, starting from Jayaprit. And all my thanks and love to Deepika, Golda, Demo, and Jayaprit for looping everybody in. So my job is only execution, and I had a big team working for me, working for this session, working for this day, including each and everyone sitting here. Without you, this session would have been nothing, no? For an, even though it is live, you know, without this chairs uh, filled up, uh, session wouldn't have been a great one. So thanking the entire NMIC team, NFTC team, and you know all the sub departments like editing, social media, and everyone. And also, I would like to thank my MD and FTC JS Films. Uh, just for one thing, basically, when you go with a proposal, uh, he, especially this one, he never asked me hundred questions. He just asked me what to set. I said, sir, this is it, and these are the people. He just said one thing: go ahead. You know, so I am so blessed that I am working in a uh, place where the progressive forward thoughts are appreciated and supported always, at least for me. I'm grateful and thankful and always blessed. And uh, once again, thanking all my speaker friends and we'll be in touch. And definitely I'll make sure we all are meeting in person along with the team of NFTC, either one by one or as a group. And yes, we have already spoken in person, so yeah, let's wait for it. And love you all so much. Uh, and thank you so much in name of uh, NFTC. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Cheda. Thank you, Sir. Thank you, Tim. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much, Gauri, for this lovely uh, words. Can I have a round of applause for her, please? And uh, whatever she said is exactly true. I mean, being a woman out here, and I completely support her, all the ideas. And yes, we do have a lovely team and also the leaders. So we would like to call our visionary leader, our general manager, D. Ramakrishna. Sir. So please come on the dais and say a few words of the event and his views about it. Thank you for being with us. It was a wonderful evening and a wonderful session. And uh, we had a wonderful ladies to talk about their struggle, their uh, upcoming, their experience, and uh, passion, what they have been carrying, and never you know, um, you know, let, uh, let their uh, dreams go off. So the kind of passion and which could you know, make every one of us sitting here and watching could drive to make their life better and you know, whatever the ambition they have been looking forward, that could be the passage. So I would like to say uh, that um, you know we could not have you here, uh, you know, physically because you know we would like to, we would have honored you with our felicitation and uh, the you know that is that is the one thing missing, and uh, but uh, you know within 48 hours the felicitation will reach you uh, in a letter of honor from uh, the National Film Development Corporation, and uh, thank you so much uh, for being with us and made this event a great success with your, uh, you know, complete kind of uh, uh, sharing of your experiences and uh, nothing more than uh, that could have been made this day oh, wonderful. And I would like to thank every one of you here and also the entire team putting this uh, a great successful event, including the technical and uh, Archana and uh, her team and Jaita um, and all like Gauri, everyone has been working for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we are just winding up this event. Thank you.
Thank you so much, sir. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we don't stop, actually. This is just one part of today's event. As you all know that we will be having soon the screening of the film No Man's Land. But before that, I really, really want to thank the speakers once again. I mean, it's like we say in India, Atiti Devo Bhava. But you are our virtual guest today. So thank you so much. As sir said, the love will not, is not less here. So thank you so much for being a part of this panel. It really means a lot to us. So a happy International Women's Day to each one of you and all the lovely ladies out here and also in virtually who are there with us. Thank you so much, everyone. And now I would like to tell you a small thing about, you know, uh, to Jai Prat, sir, that, you know, you have been here, you have been honoring, you have been in the panel discussion. It means a lot, as Gauri rightly said, that you were honoring men also. I mean, we don't have this uh, thing that, you know, men and women are different. We feel that men and women are equal. That is the message which we want to actually portray. So thank you, each one of you. Thank you, the lovely team out there. Thank you, the audience. Thank you, virtually, who are watching us. And also, my lovely NMIC and FDC team. I, we cannot do this without an Archana and your team. Thank you so much for all the technical help. So guys, just stay tuned. Mm, all the virtual people out there, I'm so sorry we couldn't show you the film, but we have Nomad's Land being screened soon in the Audi. And for all who are here, thank you so much. Just stay tuned. Within 10, 15 minutes, we're gonna start. Thank you. This is Jaita Ghosh signing off. And happy International Women's Day once again. Great, bye-bye. Mumbai welcomes you.